Well, hello, everybody. It is Heidi Kaizen at Hen and Chick Studio in Conrad, Iowa. And we are super excited to bring you yet another creative conversation tonight. Our goal is to introduce you to somebody in the industry and to be able to kind of almost be like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, where we get to pull behind the green curtain and talk with the designer, or in this particular particular case, designers, um, behind that green curtain. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad this evening to be able to in, um, invite to join me to this creative conversation, Leanne and Caitlin from the whole country caboodle. Good evening, ladies. How are you doing? We're great. We're great, Heidi. Oh, that is awesome. And we are so excited to have you here. You know, uh, this is, is wonderful. Again, uh, I love being able to introduce our customers to other people in the industry and even better that it is somebody from Iowa. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, that is that is a wonderful thing. You're just north of us by a couple of hours. So that's um, an hour and a half, somewhere in there, yep. in that ballpark, not too far. But I would love to start with um, getting to know you guys just a little bit better. Can you give us, uh, obviously the name of your business is the Whole Country Caboodle. And Leanne, uh, I know you started it several years ago. Um, tell us a little bit about what you do and, uh, and how the two of you, uh, I'll say, work together. Okay. Well, Heidi, yes, I, um, I started this business. Actually, this is my 30th year. Um, in the quilt industry. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I um, had done some other things before that, but actually 1992 was my first year. And, um, you know, I was pretty green. You know, I think I was probably close to your age um, when I went to my first quilt market out in Portland, Oregon. Absolutely scared to death. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And um, honestly, it's probably, I mean, the journey has been outstanding. Uh, never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would have uh, one of my children in the business. Um, I started designing fabric, Heidi, in 1994. Um, and I was with uh, a company for about 13, 14 years. And then uh, about that same time uh, distance uh, long ago, I, I started with um, Henry Glass Fabrics. And so um, I am currently designing for Henry Glass along with Caitlin. Mm -hmm. um, Caitlin, I'll let you kind of tell a little bit about yeah. how you joined the business. Yeah. So like mom said, I was never going to work with her. People would say, you're going to take over her company someday. I said, no way. That's not going to happen. And I mean, I still don't plan to take it over, but we're working together and it's great. Um, I started working with her in 2010 and now I've been full time for a couple of years and it's been wonderful. We work well together, make a great team. I did. I, you know, when I was little, I would be with mom at the shop. And so I've been around this a long time. Um, I don't love to sew. I am sorry to say, <laughs> but I do love design and I love designing quilts and projects and um, but. I, I don't have the desire to sew and that's okay. You know, each of us have our strengths. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's been, it's been great. So we design all of our fabric collections together. Now mom draws, hand draws everything. And then I redo it all um, digitally on the computer. And so you can kind of see all of this behind us are collections that we have designed. So it's been a great, um, great journey for it us. It has been. It, that is, that's wonderful. And 30 years is quite remarkable mm -hmm. for any business. And so I congratulate you on that. Thank you. When you started, did you envision that you would be, I mean, did you start doing exactly what you're doing today or has it evolved? How has it changed? Well, Heidi, I've always, I've always been in uh, applique, machine rayage applique. And I actually, uh, prior to, to designing patterns, I was doing the finished work. And um, like a lot of uh, people that are in the sewing uh, profession, I developed carpal tunnel syndrome and had to have surgery. And so that's when I went from the actual manufacturing finished things to the designing of the fabric or the patterns. Um, and so that's, that's when I started get having other people use my patterns to make their projects instead of me making them. 
So, so you were you act you were actually like doing the appliques and then yeah. selling them at a local craft show type yep. thing. Or yes, yes. Fun? We started with little church bazaars and bazaars at schools. And you know, I I was a stay-at-home mom. I wanted to be home with our children. And so it was it was a good business to have. Well, it just it kept growing and growing. We specialized um, in sweatshirts for like moms and grandmas primarily. And and so I had four other gals working for me. And I mean, it was, it was good. It was a good business. Um, but I, I guess, you know, there were other things in store for me. And that's, uh, that's when I started designing my, my patterns. Now, when you, when you, again, as, as you're talking about your patterns, do you think your style has, I mean, in some ways stayed, <laughs> I mean, I will say some similarities. I mean, obviously you've yeah. always liked to applicate. Yeah. Our, our, our style is very whimsical. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, if, if you've seen our work, you know that our characters um, are pretty whimsical. Uh, we did retail shows for a few years. And one of the things we would hear as people would walk into our booth is your booth just makes me smile. It makes me happy. And um, that's what Caitlin and I, that's kind of our goal, even in designing fabric, pretty much every collection that we design um, has some sort of a message. And it's a positive message, mm -hmm. of course, uh, for children. And yeah, and so. But it is fun and kind of funny to look back at old things that she's designed. <laughs> she gets so embarrassed. I'm like, hey, you know what? We all just grow and become better with age. So, I mean, I, I hope feel I've like, evolved. You know, oh. I feel like, you know, back early on, like, I think mom's kind of signature style was to have like these little dots for eyes. And so pe like, I think once we started to do those retail shows and people would say, well, they don't have eyes. We kind of started to change our <laughs> eyes on our, you know, animals a little bit because that just gets a little bit annoying. So you just kind of hear from the customer too, of what they desire to have. And we've evolved, but I feel like, yeah, kept it super whimsical. And I feel like even with your Noah and company group that you did, you know, kind of reutilizing some of the animals, but just taking them up a notch, which yep. has been really cool. Well, and, and Caitlin's helped do that. You know, her, her graphic skills have, I, I like to say she takes my artwork and makes it a thousand times better, you know, and, and I just, I, I did a little bit of my work on like Adobe Photoshop, but Caitlin works in Illustrator. And so that in that way we are such a good team and Caitlin Caitlin brings in some design a lot of design things you know I mean some of the things change because Kate goes you know mom I think we need to do it this mm -hmm. way and and I love it I love it because you know when you're just yourself it's you don't always you know see things differently mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh I can only imagine I even even here at the store uh, I've got staff members uh, like Jamie that I bounce things off of and Jackie who you guys mm -hmm. met a little bit ago it's so much better that if you have mm -hmm. people to work with um, you end up with a better product because they push you to be better all of those kinds of things mm -hmm. yes so when you are, I um, mean, there's so many different directions here I want to go. So I'm trying to think <laughs> if there's a, a logical direction I should take take us in this conversation. But um, you have already said that your characters are whimsical, mm -hmm. and uh, behind me are a few of the samples that you had mm -hmm. sent us, and something that we certainly have had fun with in the last couple of weeks getting ready for this is showing um the dogs and the cats yep. and and stuff and you can't help but smile <laughs> when you look at them and so you know I, i'd love to know where do you get the inspiration where what are you you know uh for whether it be individual pieces or a collection mm -hmm. of fabric you know where are you going for your inspiration and everywhere I feel like a lot of times for fabric collections, it would kind of come from like grandchildren, my nieces and nephews, kind of something that they're into at the time. We did one group called Silly Gilly and Friends, which was these little monsters. And like my nephew had a like an imaginary friend whose name was Silly Gilly. So just kind of always looking around. Um, and then like with animals, it would be what someone would ask for or what we would think would be cute. And yeah, we, we draw off kind of our 
our life experience, Heidi. And, and so, you know, when, when you're working with something that you are passionate about, like Caitlin and I both love animals and we, uh, we do a lot for the, the rescue groups and we've done, I think three different rescue lines. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's because we love animals. And so we, the, the group that we did, and uh, I'll show you some of these, called S'more Fun Outdoors, uh, my parents owned a resort in Canada. And, and so, you know, we spent a lot of time outdoors and we spent time camping. And, you know, it's just, we, you know, you pull from your personal experience mm -hmm. and then you kind of know what it is that you're, that you're doing, you mm -hmm. know, and what you're promoting. Yeah. So that's kind of where I, we, that's where we get it. Yeah. Kind of from everywhere. And I also like to say, and I'm just going to put it out there. I mean, Caitlin and I both feel that we have been given a gift and, you know, we like to give back that gift uh, to other people, mm -hmm. you know, so. That's, Absolutely. I would, yeah. I would definitely say that you have been, have been given a gift. That is, that is wonderful. So let's show us, um, you were talking about just a yeah. second ago, I think, uh, uh, what s'mores, yep. uh, Tell us a the little bit about that. Outdoors. Yep. yep. These are some bibs. Yep. And these are some of the bibs that I did. And uh, this one, this one came, I mean, I made these bibs for my kids when they were little and um, they have little sleeves. So, you know, they put them on, it, it covers their, you know, their little arms, but this one has the little bear applique on it. Um, this, the little plaid that's on here is from our, our bias plaid basics. This one was using, did you use your, your double-sided fusible for the applique? Um, this one, I, I used a, a, just a fusible batting. Oh. I, I have a tendency to use some different, depending on the project, uh, different battings. And so this one we did with the little bullfrog on, is that the one on the lily pad, Kate? Nope. This is just the frog. That's just the frog. That one I think I did on a double-sided uh, batting, mm -hmm. but you know, you can use just whatever you want. Yeah. This is the bullfrog yep. and the lily pad. So again, just Here's a little, little chipmunk. Caitlin and I went in the house for a little bit tonight and we looked on our windowsill in, in the kitchen and there sat a tiny little squirrel. Yeah, baby squirrel. I go, squirrel. Mom goes, where? And it's like looking out in the yard. I go, right there. And as everybody is, as everybody is looking at these, if you go to henandchickstudio.com slash the whole country caboodle, um, and uh, Jamie might be putting the link in. I can't see that at this moment. So she might be putting the link in. But if you go to that page, um, all of the patterns, the kits, the mm -hmm. all the things that we're talking about are all going to be found um, right there. So absolutely. And then the last little bib that we have, Heidi, is one that's this is actually just it's on a towel. And it's our moose, kind of a fun little moose. And um, yeah, so it's just a towel that you pull over the head. Mm -hmm. Just really simple. And remind me, are all of those patterns, I don't have the pattern sheet, are all of those bibs all in one pattern together? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. All the bibs and all the applique patterns are all included mm -hmm. uh, together. Yes. Okay. And um, so with that, with that, I love those because I think I need an adult one. We were discussing that earlier. <laughs> we actually have a pattern for an yeah. adult bib. <laughs> I'll be, I might be asking for that later. <laughs> um, Okay, so if if somebody is watching mm -hmm. and they're saying to themselves, oh, I don't cut out applique pieces, mm -hmm. what's yeah. the first thing we need to tell them? Well, well, you tell. The first thing we need to tell them is every single one of these appliques that you are seeing here are can be purchased as a laser cut applique. We have three big lasers downstairs in our laser room that are pretty much running all the time. And what we do is we take a piece of fabric, we um, apply the fusible onto the fabric, and then we put it into the machine. And Caitlin sets this all up so everything is laser cut. You don't have to, you don't have to cut anything out. Mm -hmm. If you know our appliques, they can have some little kind of tiny points and such and it just takes all the guesswork yep. so you're, um, you're out of it your kits are going to have the pre-cut pre-fused applique in them for you already yeah so pre-cut we'll pre-fused we'll yep pre-cut pre-fused with a heat and bond light 
Yep. And if there's if there's notions like little buttons that you you know you can see in there, um, those will be included in the in the patterns as well. And then of course, um, you know, we like to show different different ways that you can use them. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to, at some point in this, we're going to demo for you. Yeah. We, as in mom, will demo for you <laughs> how to assemble the applique. Yeah. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Yeah. Yes. And so, and I think this is where, um, you know, I think some people start to get afraid of applique and they yeah. shouldn't be no, because right. there's so many um, tricks and things that can make it yeah. so easy and appliques, I always think just give you the option of bringing some things to life yeah. because you can get multiple layers and yep. different pieces and things that would be extremely difficult to do if I was piecing mm -hmm. them. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things too, Heidi, that we like to do is um, like, like for instance, on this little mug rug, we've got this little Boston Terrier with the bunny ears. It's out of the, the Easter party uh, kit, little mug rugs is we use um, we use different textures. So the, the white that's on here is actually a batting. It's a warm and natural batting that we laser cut. Uh, we've tested it as far as washability and that type of thing. Um, children love dimension and they love texture. And so we'll mix flannels with cottons with the, the, the textured batting. Mm -hmm. we, we put a lot of rickrack uh, mm -hmm. you know, into the kits and that type of thing. Uh, not not only for kids, but you know, we we adults like some of those little trims and stuff too. So mm -hmm. uh yeah, we just try to do, you know, stuff that's fun and um, you know, different things that people like to to look at and feel. Um it's just fun. Yeah. They are. There are lots of and I like love that that you add even more texture because an applique could be texture just because there's layers, yep. but by adding like the bad, I mean the batting as part of the applique. Um, this gives it even more texture. So that's awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and the other thing I, I think you've already mentioned, but I do want to reiterate this is that one of the reasons I love working with you guys is that your kits are complete. Mm -hmm. And um, as a shop owner, that makes my life a lot easier. But as a consumer, oh my gosh, you do not have to go 10 places right. to find the 10 different things you need. It's all going to be in that one kit. Exactly. Yep. Like those little kits behind you, Heidi, those are just, uh, those are little, uh, they're made out of a towel, those little pillow wraps. And yep, um, yep those come with all the fabric, the pre-cut, the towel, everything is in there. And Heidi, you have those all on your site. Mm -hmm. um, those, yeah. those are a fun little project. Yep. And um, okay, so isn't he cute? See, look, you can't help but smile. Maybe my hair I, looks like like his beard or something. You have I don't know. the nanny goat hair. I was gonna say, you know, they say that your you know your owner looks like your dog. I don't you know. Need that dog. Well, this is my dog. If that's any indication. Well, by the way, sometimes mom, um, you might have. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so again, another thing that I liked. Um, about your products are the fact that so I can buy the pillow um, and the wrap everything for that but the applique is not included that not is in, separate. not in that one not in that, that not, so in, like that. not this, in this particular on one these ones you are going to get the applique but in the um, what we call our simple project sheets or our simple projects um, the applique, you get to choose. So you might not have that dog. You might have a dog, a different dog that looks like you. And so you want right. to buy that one. Or a cat. Exactly. Or, yeah. a cat. or a cat. cat people. Yep. Yep. We have yep. lots to choose from. So we send so, you some, a good list of the dogs and the cats that we have. Yes. Yes. And, um, the, okay. And then the fun thing I was going to say, we took this apart on the video. So you could literally, you can take it apart. Yep. And you can wash yep. whatever you need to. You can change out colors, switch it out for the seasons, mm -hmm. whatever you want to do. Okay. And so I love that. Um, and like I was noticing, like there's, uh, is it, is this the, is this like Basel? That's the, the Basel. Yeah. That's a okay. single sided uh, fusible uh, batting. But that's in the kit. Mm -hmm. That's in the kit. So again, I don't is, have to yeah. go looking for that. Yeah, I believe I, I did. did. I believe we did put that in the kit. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. And the Rick Rack. I noticed there was Rick Rack. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Mom okay, loves so. her Rick Rack. I do love my Rick Rack. 
Hey, well, Rick Rack again adds another dimension. Okay, so I'm gonna try to I'll try to put this back together. Our cute yep, little so, dog. Oh, and we have the buttons too. Oh yes, yes. It yes. Said, the road to my heart is paved with paw print, so it's a little wood um, cut button. Do you and do you laser cut those too? We do. We do. Oh my, you guys are so creative. Okay, so now um, again, you have project sheets. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, want the project sheet, but not necessarily um, the whole kit, yep. then you want to pick your own fabrics and all that, you can yep. do that. Yep. Yep. Um, now, one of the things that we've we've been discussing now, all the things that you can see right here. Mm -hmm. um, can we see? No, you can't see this. Um, this cute little oh, like this doodle dirt. pad. Do these all use the dog and cat appliques in this particular example? That are are those individually packed ones that are I think there is it for an eight, eight or nine inch, inch block. Yep. 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 And you've got to kind of see the size of it now. Like the little sunflower that's behind you, Heidi. That's on a bigger notebook. Yep. So the project sheet will um, instruct you how to adjust that size mm -hmm. if you have a larger notebook. Yep. And so if you have a larger applique, then you might want to consider, you know, what size you want to put it on. But what Caitlin and I have tried to do with these project sheets because um, they're, they're very inexpensive. Um, and, and that way the, your customer can kind of customize yep. whatever they want to put on it. We don't like it, to be so. a cookie cutter. You no. have to have this, like we want, you know, we want you to be able to buy whatever you want. These two little projects behind me, the little dog pillow and the, uh, what do we call that? Well, that one was patches and points. Patches and points. These both are just project sheets as well. And then the customer can choose what yep. they want to put on it. So. And then this is as well. Yeah. This is our furry friend bench pillow. So you pick. That is so cute. Dogs or cats. I think, I think we sent you like 13 cats and maybe like 13 to 20 dogs or something. So lots to choose from. And those are all, if you want them, all laser cut. Yeah. So it takes a lot of the I'll work show, out of it. I'll just show the rest of the project sheets that I think are on your, um, that are on your site. These are Perfect. the the placemats. So the pattern includes the alphabet. If you have a dog that's not named Buddy, so then you would buy all the fabric that you want, and um, and then yeah, yep, yeah, make those. And then we have these, which are our pet Christmas stockings. So we have the so Boston cute. and the tuxedo. Super fun. Use up your stash for those. So yeah. Keep my iron going. Real fun. I mean, just and then it's just like you can get together with your friends and do a project together and have all the simple projects look completely different because you have different animals, different fabrics, and yes. And it's a you know an inexpensive pattern that you're not breaking the bank. So then you can really buy the fabric and all the, the fun things that you want. Yes. Well, should we jump into a little bit of how sure. to? Yeah, you bet. Did that. your you iron bet. is beeping at you? Did you yeah, hear my iron? I heard your iron. And yes, we wanna, iron. yes we I had to make keep sure. that going. Well, and and Heidi, I just, you know, because I am so passionate about fusible raw edge applique, you know, I've over, over the last 30 years um, really tried to find products that, number one, simplify uh, make it fun. Caitlin and I have worked really hard in trying to make the process fun. And um, so what I want to show you today is a little bit of what you're going to get when you get one of these laser cut kits and then how we go about putting them together. Uh, one of the tools that I feel is an absolute must, and we've got um, you've got two different sizes, I believe, Heidi, didn't, uh, did you get the, the, 12 and the, and the, yes, you, yes, we've got 12 by 12 and yep. 12 by 18. Yep. Mm -hmm. These are, um, these are just a must if you're going to do this because they'll, they'll last forever. And they're, it's just a silicone mat and these silicone mats, you actually, they are meant to be ironed on. And so what you're going to do is you're going to start with your ironing surface. I have a wool mat sitting here and you're going to take, um, Inside of your applique, there is a layout and it instructs on there that the dashed line is the is the piece that needs to be underneath or it's an overlap. So what you'll do is you'll put that 
And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this real quick. I've got this pretty well prepared so that- Do you want me to get closer or can, do you think that you can see? Okay, I can take my phone off and kind of get closer. I think, uh, I I think, think we're okay. I think you can see here. Okay. You can see through that mat, okay? And so putting an applique together is just kind of like putting together a puzzle. And, and the cool thing about these silicone mats too is with the fusible that we put on the fabric, we used a, a heat and bond light. So it is meant to be stitched. These kind of stick uh, before you even iron them. Now I'm gonna lay these on here. And if we had an overhead, you could see a little mm -hmm. bit better, but you can see that they don't slide around. But what I do is I take my iron and I'm gonna have a dry iron for most of this is I tack those with the tip of my iron, Heidi. And the reason that I tack them is because if I wanna move a piece, then I don't have to pull it all apart. Um, pulling it off of the mat is one thing, but when you have fabric, iron to fabric, it's a lot harder to pull it apart. So you wanna, you wanna make sure you do that. Now, most of these pieces I have um, already, the fusible off the back. A couple of these I waited for. Now, when Caitlin and I set these up or when Caitlin does, we try to put as many of the pieces that are the same fabric or whatever together because there's less likely that you're gonna be losing pieces, mm -hmm. okay? So this has three different pieces in it. So we recommend that you take the fusible off first and it just simply yep. peels off. Sometimes the fusible will come off with the backing. So then you just put it back on and yeah. iron it back. Not very often, yep. but once in a we've while. Got, we've gotten a new heat press. So that's really helped with that issue. Yep. And then I love these little Kai scissors. I think you have these, the little four yep. inch scissors, yep. Heidi. And, and there's a little tick mark that what you're gonna need to do is just simply uh, snip those apart. And then as she's doing that, I'll show you this one. So yep. um, say you get a cat, the ears, they're the we left them in. On the one side, there's little eyeballs in there. So keep all your scraps until the end, just in case there's like a tiny nose or a tiny eyeball kind of hidden on something. Um, again, you know, we kind of just maximize the amount of fabric that we can use. We can, our laser, we can cut um, a 21 by 15 and a half inch mm -hmm. sheet, one sheet at a time. So um, we just, we don't want waste. Um, so that's why we do that. And if you're ever missing a piece, you would just contact us and make absolutely it yeah we we these are all um you know assembled by human hands mm -hmm. and sometimes you know we have uh you know you can either lose a piece or you can we can miss putting one in there so don't hesitate to give us a call um yeah these have the little eyeballs in there so i'm going to set that aside and we left the ears in so that like they don't fly around everywhere when we cut them yep it's I think it sounds like you guys assemble things with love. We do. Uh, I think that's what we try. I, and our employees are amazing. And so we couldn't. Oh do my it goodness. It, we couldn't do we it have the best them. employees in the world. Now, one of the things that I, I like to teach is that um, you know, if I put if I put this piece down, um, I'm not going to see anything underneath it. The eyes, the, the eyes and the nose. Places. So so what I'll do is I'll assemble some of those pieces. Uh, before I put everything together. So these little eyes, let's see here, I'll get them in the right spot. What I'm gonna do is assemble these. I'm gonna iron them together. Now this, because, because it's on this mat, they don't slip, but I'm gonna tack down this eyeball. I'm gonna put this one on. And because I've done so many of these, I don't really have to look too much to know where these pieces go. Okay, strange but, things. Strange things are coming to my mind to ask you. Yeah. You're probably gonna be like, "What?" That's great. Um, so, so um, number one, you pulled the paper off from the edge of the yep. applique. Yeah. I've always been told to like score the paper and oh. pull the paper from the inside out. Any truth or any importance? You know, in that? Heidi, I I totally understand where you're coming from. Like Caitlin said, um, we when we were first doing this, we were um, adhering everything with an iron. So it was a little bit of an uneven adherence. And, and sometimes, sometimes you did have to re-iron the fusible, you know, back down. Since we started using the heat press, um, 
it's it's we don't have that problem so much anymore it's, it's, it, it gives a real yeah. even adherence and basically all you have to do is even just take the corner and just turn just kind of press it um just turn it over and it pops and then you just peel it off but if you like the method of doing i mean there's no wrong right wrong. no way i mean it, you but... can sure do it that way but you really don't have to i i don't instruct that okay and then um, i'm seeing you as i'm watching and you uh -huh. have I'm not going to say, but you have a regular size iron. I do. I do. And so all things, you know, we, today we have the little irons that look like curling yep. irons and we right. have mini irons and yep. we have, you know, you obviously, it, it doesn't require any kind of a special little iron. You're no, just it really doesn't. I it, go ahead, Kate. Well, I was just thinking like, you know, say you might have shoulder issues or different things. I mean, if you have a heavy, heavy iron, it might be nice to just mom used to use like for demos yep. she would have the tiny little reliable iron i think yep. it was that had steam and that was great i mean yep. if you just want it to sit next to your i mean most all of the appliques that we assemble do not require steam you probably don't want to use too much steam because the steam can over activate the fusible what i use a shot of steam for if you just heard that is on the batting pieces. So when you get layer upon layer upon layer and it gets thicker and thicker and thicker, you need to get enough heat down to that bottom layer that it activates that fusible. And so what I've done, and I can actually just pick this up and show it to you, is I have, I put the little face together, okay? I've got his eyes together, his little muzzle with his nose. I've got that all put together. And we are all smiling right now because this yeah. is the cutest little face. You know, <laughs> that's why I say these, these are just so much fun. You know, you can, you can do these with your grandkids, you know, age appropriate for an iron. Now, what I'm going to do is you're going to let this cool and I've let it cool. I'm going to peel these pieces off. That's the little muzzle. Here's the little eyes that I've got peeled off. And now I'm going to start putting down the bigger pieces. So because I've got the smaller ones already done. And you might have to like make a copy of the um, of the layout so that you can look at the cover to mm -hmm. kind of see the picture of it too. But it goes together. And, and the thing of it is now, when you're putting this together, you can see exactly where these pieces go because we are, it's laser cut to, to be exact with, with these, uh, drawings no the layouts yes yeah they match the layouts that it's yeah. absolutely gonna match up there's no yep. so now i've got the little face that i'm gonna put on and like i say i've got batting on batting so i'm gonna use a shot of steam on that so basically when you were putting together the little pieces you're kind of like i'm gonna say pre-grouping you yes. know i don't know what yes. the word is but you're you're pre-assembling exactly the little, the little pieces before you go on to the bigger pieces exactly because if i put the big piece down i can't see where they go and then you're constantly flipping up the yep. mat and now we yep. have this whole guy this little and he's right behind you too on yep, the he's, on, he's right behind you on the pillow oh, yeah it's right here yep yes he's right here i'll get, grab him that's the tuxedo cat yep he is cute. Now, this is Absolutely. cool. And what I'm going to do, and, and I'm going to show you, can you see how shiny that back is, Heidi? Yes, I can. That's your fusible. Because so you that's... have, but so, and this is where like my mind's a little blown <laughs> that you're fusing on top of fusing, uh -huh. but you're doing it in a way that it's not, I'm going to say ruining the fusible on the back. Correct. That's why these mats are so That's great. why you have to have the mat. Yep. Because the mat, it provides that release. Because it's silicone, it, it does not stick to it. It irons to it, but it peels right off. Okay. These mats are meant to be ironed on. I have gals that buy them and they say, no, I don't want to touch my iron to it because I'm afraid I'm going to melt it. They are meant to be ironed on. So once you have your little guy all put together, then whether you're putting it on a towel, um, a pillow, the pillow wrap, you know, I, when I, I started doing this, Heidi, this method, it wasn't with silicone mats. I wish I was the one that did invent mm -hmm. these, but I started doing these years ago where I would assemble them on um, the paper that I would peel off of the fusible. And so, because I did 
the finished shirts, I would get a stack of things all put together. Like if I was doing this cat, I'd have a dozen to 24 cats put together, I'd peel one off of that paper and I just iron it down because all of my pieces are gonna be exactly where I want them. I, I just think that's wonderful. And and the thing, like we've been talking with people, okay, so that, that cat, you could simply be making a quilt block that is nine inches square right? and have a bunch of piece log cabin blocks. We'll just say log cabins because everybody yep. knows what a log cabin mm -hmm. block is. And you just have one square that is not a log cabin that you put the cat on, mm -hmm. or maybe you put it on top of the log cabin because yeah. you want a log cabin behind him. Right. Exactly. But you can literally put that applique anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Do you yep. have that? And then we had, we had told you, I think, or maybe Jamie about like the, the no so projects so we like just show this on a little clipboard this is actually the whole applique put together it's all assembled just like i did um this little tuxedo cat but what i do you can iron that on these are clipboards it's mdf clipboards yep. uh paper bags brown paper bags make cute little gift bags um, what I recommend is um, if you don't want to iron it onto something, just flip it over because it's all ironed together, flip it over and take a spray adhesive and just spray it and then stick it down. Mm -hmm. And That's I mean, these have with. been sprayed on here for years yeah. and they will not come off. Mm -hmm. So you can do no sew with these as well as yep. doing stitched projects. Because well, they're not with the heat and bond light. I don't know if you said this, that they're meant to be sewn. Right. You know, if you're going to be handling the project a lot. Um, you'll have to sew it because otherwise it will come. Yeah, off. but with these, they don't because they're all ironed together. Yep. So that and is it's so not going to cool. be, you know, washed and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, so another thing, so your wool mat and we mm -hmm. sell wool mats mm -hmm. um, as well. And yep. the ladies love them. Are you, are you using that just because that's your ironing? You don't have a, like you're on a table and you need it. You know, Heidi, iron I, iron I, I love the wool mat. I absolutely love the wool mat. It, it gives you more of a heat from both sides. You know, that's the whole premise of the wool um, is that the heat uh, bounces back up. And so it heats a little more quickly. And I find, um, you know, when I'm ironing stuff on, I just, I iron everything on my wool mats. So, yeah. Okay. Now just to, I want to just, uh, cause I know I would make a mistake are when, when you're putting all that together uh -huh. is like, when you start fusing that stuff together, is it permanent? Like I'm like non repositionable. Well, that's why I recommend that you tack it first. Okay. So that's because like the tip of your now, iron. That's now tacking. these, these pieces probably with the batting, I don't have that completely ironed down, but if I do try to pull this apart, Mm, you, you you might leave some of the fusible on one or side phrase the edge of yeah. the fabric you want to make sure that you have your pieces positioned where you want them before you put your iron down and iron them completely down now because it is a lightweight fusible you have a little bit more if you're using a heavyweight probably not you're not going to get it apart the lightweight you can um, but that's why we recommend that you tack it with the tip of your iron first mm -hmm. okay yep yep very good. Now, um, you also then just indicated that they are heat and bond light and you're, you're, you're under the impression that if somebody's going to handle, handle it a lot, that you're, that they're going to sew it down. Right. So tell us, um, what are you doing to sew it down? Are you doing that by hand? Or are you doing that by machine? You can do it either way. You can okay. do it either way, Heidi. Do you want to say anything about that? Before um, you go well, first stitches? of all, once, once you get your um, everything put together and you decide what you want to put it on, I actually have, I, I, wanna, I wanted to share this with you. Um, this is something that I just kind of figured out in the last, well, probably the last year, which, you know, a do old dog can mm -hmm. learn new tricks. And I just, this is something that simplifies things for me. Um, this is actually this little, it's this little guy right back yep. here in black, okay? Now, when we use a, a black on a black, it's really hard to see the stitch line where you're supposed to stitch, okay? So I what that. I've done, and I found, I found these, and Heidi, this is something I, I didn't even have time to share with you, but they're up, and maybe you have these. I know you have chalk markers, you have white pencils. This is a heat erasable pen. 
You have the box over here. Yep. So and so the there's, there's Tell us the d- brand. Well, this is, it's called iBody. I have got them on Amazon. Yeah. I B O T T I. And this came in a pack of four with all different color of inks. Now, if Katie's going to show this to you, what I've done is I have drawn on the edges of all my pieces that are black on black. So Except what, for the nose. So you can see. Right. Well, I, I didn't, I, I didn't the do nose. the nose. Yes. So when I'm stitching that, all I have to do is follow that white line. So mm-hmm. then the beauty is that then you get it all done. Well, and I'm just going to show you really quick. Once you get it all stitched, okay, because we don't want all these lines. I'm just my iron on here. Look at this. Do more. My lines are gone. Get it up there. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, if if where I really started doing this was on light fabrics, because I'll do, say, uh, a white on a white, two different mm-hmm. prints, and it's hard to see where one print stops and one print starts. So what I have, what I started doing is using the water soluble quilters pens or the disappearing quilters pen. Mm-hmm. And I would just draw right next to it and then stitch it and then it would go away. So I wouldn't have to heat it, but with the, with the disappearing pen, that's a, another thing that you can do just to simplify where you need to stitch when you're stitching light on light. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that stitches. Then another um, another thing that is a must a must for machine applique. This little guy, this little beagle, I've got on this towel. It's just simply ironed on. Before you stitch you need a stabilizer. And the one that I like, and Heidi, you have it, correct? Yes, we do. It's a perforated stabilizer. Now, what I've done, it it comes in a bolt, so you can get it by the yard from Heidi. And it is super, super soft, okay? You just simply, because it's perforated, it's gonna tear real easily. But the cool thing about it, you put this piece behind here and you stitch through through those layers, through the layer, all the way through that. Once you get it all stitched, you just simply tear off around the outside, okay? You don't have to tear all the pieces on the inside, and I promise you it won't explode like a Kleenex does in your dryer (laughs) if you wash it. So the thing that I love about these is it doesn't make your applique stiff like some of your stabilizers. Now, I have people ask me, why do you use a stabilizer? It's not for your towel. It's not for your fabric. It's for your stitches because it stabilizes the stitches. If you ever um, applique on something and you get this little wavy effect, Mm -hmm. it's because you needed a stabilizer to stabilize those stitches. So this, this stabilizer is the best thing I have found. If they're to get the pillow wrap, do they need a stabilizer? No, because the batting serves as your stabilizer. So so in some projects, you don't need a stabilizer because if you're you're sewing through something really thick, you won't need a stabilizer. But a single layer of fabric, a single layer of a towel, I highly recommend that you use a stabilizer. And it really is soft stuff. When I was working it so with that kind of thing, it's like, wow, it, it, it does feel really soft when you describe mm-hmm. it that way. It does. And it tears, it tears off very easily. So, I mean, you could, you could even have your grandkids sitting there pulling that stuff off. It's fun because it just rips, you know, and uh, stitches through really well. And like I say, I like the fact that it doesn't stiffen your project. Mm-hmm. So I started using it like on my baby quilts because you don't want to make a baby quilt with appliques and then have it be all stiff. And so that's kind of, I did some research on product and that's where I started using it. Now, the, the, the other thing that I want to talk to you about just a little bit, and, um, you know, I know we don't have a whole lot of time, but I do get asked, you know, like what stitches I like to use, um, as far as with the applique process. Um, 
my three absolute favorite stitches, number one would be the blanket stitch or buttonhole stitch. Uh, my second would be the satin or zigzag stitch. And then I do a lot of back stitching, like in a kind of a back stitch. If I want to define, say, um, a stem on a flower or um, detailing, say, uh, through a project or whatever, I'll use that a lot. Um, but a lot of our appliques um, have oh, there's points. They have, you know, like the little hair and stuff that come down. If you can see that, mm -hmm. see those little points yeah. on there. Yes. And I have people say to me, how, how do I, how do I stitch that? Um, and not because you get down to the narrow part of the point and you're going into the fabric, not the applique. And so um, there's several things that you can do. And we, we are going to have a little bit more of a, an instructional video on this because it is something that we um, get asked a lot is you can, as you're stitching, you can narrow your stitch as you go down to your point. Um, I use um, a Bernina and I start usually with a 2.1 and I'll go down all the way down to say a 1.6 maybe. But the other thing you can do is once you're going down to your point is I always end with my needle at the point. And when I turn it, I take a stitch up into the applique and then back out. And, and so you really, you don't, if you do it that way, you really don't have to even adjust the width so much because it's pretty much just learning how to um, maneuver your, your needle and your stitches into that applique and not into say the towel when you're stitching it. Hope that makes sense. I don't know. We'll do more instructional stuff on that, but um, well, we, we can't, we can't do it all in an hour. So it's no. just more reason to talk to you more in the future. So that's right. That's I right. See, you know, you just tell us when we're getting close to time. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing good. Okay. Now uh, you're talking about the stitches, your favorite stitches. I love that. What about your favorite um, thread? And because yep. today is National Sewing Machine Day, and we've been talking about sewing machine needles, do you also have a favorite needle that you use? Yeah. Um, well, thread, I will say, uh, I'll talk about that first. Um, I, I, I like the Isacord. Um, I started using that because I bought my machine, uh, my Bernina from a, a, a dealer here in Iowa, and this is the thread she recommended. And, you know, I will have to be honest, uh, for years, I didn't really, I used all different kinds of thread. It kind of depended on the final look that I wanted on my applique. Some of your heavier threads are gonna give a, a more pronounced stitch. Um, some of your finer threads, you're not gonna see as well. So it kind of depends on what you want. Um, you can also do something where you do an applique and use all black thread which gives a real different look, mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of cool too. Yeah, Cause you switch out, you kind of, don't you do all one color? Yep. Then switch it out and then do the next color. Yep. I switch uh, my thread based on the color of fabric that I'm stitching. So I, I stick, you know, like color to like color. Um, and, and when I do say, you know, like this little dog, I'll do all the black and then I'll switch out to the next color and then I'll do all of that. And so, you know, I, I can get, I can get one of these done pretty quickly, you know, with, with doing it that way. And I would say 99% of the, the stitch that I use is the, the blanket what stitch. About or, the needles? Needles. I use Schmetz probably uh, 11, you know, I, I, I just when, kinda... when Rhonda um, from Schmetz taught the needle class, uh -huh. she introduced us to the non-stick needles um yes. and she said would be fabulous for applique have you used those i mean heidi i, I think you said you were going to send me some <gasps> oh <geez. laughs> i better no, get some of those in the mail no I, I haven't and i would like to try them i'll be honest uh because we use the the light fusible um i you don't get a gumming of your needle, but you Which is will good to know that's while. good to know too yep. that you don't have to have a special no needle. you don't you know have I mean? to you don't yeah. have to. Now, 
going I'm, through the I've got my notepad i'm writing it down right now okay <laughs> going through the thicknesses that on some of these you might have you might have four thicknesses you can get a tiny bit of a residue on your needle if it's a non-stick needle and i just simply go like this and it comes right off um, I don't have a lot of issue with that. So, but I would like to try those nonstick needles. I will get them in the mail too. Well, maybe we'll just have to meet halfway. I don't know. Have to meet. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you have to meet. And then I was going to say to our customers and, and everybody who's listening, we do not currently carry the Isocord threads. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly would love to hear from our customers if this is something that they don't have access to other places. Um, you know, if I were to invest in three or four basic colors, I think, you know, there looks like yep. there's some pretty basic colors that you use. Yes. I would be, I, I would be, you know, open um, mm -hmm. to carrying, you know, some of that, if that's yep. something that some customers. This uh, is wanted. a four, this is a 40 weight thread, Heidi. Yes. So, so if you, if, you know, whatever you carry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we don't carry, too. we don't carry any 40 weight. Don't you really? No, we don't. And okay. so that's what it's a new, that's a new area yep. for me. Yep. And yep. so um, certainly, again, I'm open to hearing from customers that yep. if this is something like, you know, hey, yep. you know, they'd be interested in doing, you know, or, you know, purchasing some of that, I'd love to know. So definitely send us right. a, a, you know, a note. For, for years, um, all I ever used was Coates and Clark, the dual duty thread for years. And I tell you why, because I didn't really like, I didn't want to shine on my thread. See, there's another thing, whether you like a, a shiny thread or a dull thread. So there's so many good threads out there that um, just, I would say, try some out, you know? Um, and so, yes, I, I used, you know, a, a Coates and Clark for years with my applique. Um, I like this though. I just like the way my machine handles it. So good. That is so good. All right. Any other tips? Cause I, you, this is how fast this goes. I know it's gone fast. We it has gone very minutes. fast. Any other tips at the moment that we haven't touched on? I think I've asked all my silly questions. Um, One of but, the other tips that I have Heidi, that I would say is, you know, because we have, because we have a lot of intricate appliques and especially our little animals, you know, we really try to make them, um, you know, kind of look realistic. So if it's got, you know, hair with a lot of points and, and stuff like, like the little cavalier, um, one of the things you can do instead of, uh, you know, turning your project all the time is use your mirror stitch or, and, and reverse, you know, so that takes practice. I get it, but it's pretty simple. It's really simple. Um, I was gonna say, what one? Mm, I'm not sure. Let me let me see one of the little. Oh yeah, this one. The the um, this little guy, the tuxedo cat. These little hairy things in its ear. You know, it's like little hair yeah, tufts up in its closer. ear. You know, all I do with that is I as I take I take my stitch down to a satin stitch probably about a 1.6, maybe a satin stitch. And all I do is I take that satin stitch up to the point and then I reverse it down the other side. And I just go that whole way like that. I never turn it, but I go, you know, straight forward and then reverse, straight forward and reverse. So it's like anything. Um, and, and I hate to sound, you know, kind of like a cliche, but practice makes perfect. <laughs> And um, the more you do applique, the the better you're gonna be. Where'd you go? <laughs> well, I something happened there. I could hear you, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what happens. I apologize. I was checking no my power, making sure that I still had power. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure um, what happened there. But you know what? We this is you know this is part of technology. Yeah. But before we do wrap up, one of the things we have not talked oh, about are right. these adorable little mug rugs. And so I would love to have you chat about those. Yes. Um, well, the ones that you're uh, holding, Heidi, are called um, Patchwork Garden. Mm -hmm. There's a set of six of them. Now, those all, they look pieced by the way we've stitched them, but they're actually all applique. So that red piece would be all one piece. Yep. And then you create this uh, piece to look with your stitches. What we 
one of the things we try to do um, with our applique is because of the detailing that you can put into it just with a stitch, it will look like it's been pieced or it will look like it's multiple pieces, but it's just one piece. So like Caitlin said, that red piece is one piece and then we've mm -hmm. just stitched the square into it. Yeah. So then, so if you, um, Heidi's got those, you get yep. the kit, you get all the fabric, the batting, the rickrack, the, the laser cut applique, the backing, everything, the pattern is in that kit. So and that's the patchwork garden. That. I'm gonna We've have got... to show them when I'm talking because of course, um, but I'm having a lovely technology oh, issue okay. again. I can hear you, but it is not allowing my screen and I apologize. Um, but while I'm talking, I'm gonna just show them. Okay, so here yeah. we have the tulip. Yeah. And then we have a, an adorable little heart. I can't remember. Heart. I, can't remember. <sighs> I don't remember right okay. off. Okay, adorable yeah. little heart. Yep. And then um, another little fun quilt block. Yep. And last but not least, another little fun quilt block. Yes, that's the, we have the Carolina Lily, May Basket, Pinwheel. The I think there's six of them in the that love. series. So that'd be a cute gift, but the, the one with the heart and the star, um, it's called share the love. So give that to a friend and they're great. Like, you know, you can put your hot, like drink on the side. And so we just call. Okay. Now I'm ha hang on a second. We've got, I've lost your volume. Hold on a second. Can you unmute? I've got, I unfortunately muted you. I apologize. I'm trying to get my okay. screen. I'm trying to get my screen to come back up because hey. I, it is the strangest thing. And this is where I can't. Um, you know, we're almost done. So I know. And that's, <laughs> and, and that's, what's crazy is I've lost my entire mouse yeah. capabilities. My technology is great when it works. It is. So until I can figure out how I am going to go backwards, um, but so appreciate um, all, all of your time this evening and all of the wonderful things that you have uh, brought to us here at Hen and Chick Studio. And um, I just can't say enough. It's been fun to know you um, all of these um, years and to be able to feature some of your products and projects is super fun. Well, we thank you, Heidi, for all that you do for the industry as well. Mm -hmm. It's been great. Well, wonderful. And thank you. And again, if you want to see everything about the whole country caboodle, simply go to henandchickstudio.com slash the whole country caboodle, and you will find links to all of the products. I'll put the video um, recap up there as well. So if you missed it live, everybody can see it there. And um, until the next time, I certainly hope that all of you um, get an opportunity to be creative. <laughs> and just bear with me, ladies, as we <laughs> it is it is truly the strangest thing i've done a lot of live do you need TV. us to leave would that do anything did it lock up huh? um it did my entire screen so caitlin oh yeah hold on hold on hold on She's all of a sec That was so odd. We'll see. It was there for a second. All right. I'm going to, um, I'm getting uh, instructions. I'm going to simply try to um, close my screen and you guys have a great evening. Yes. Thanks, Heidi. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.